Hi, in this segment, I will show you how we can do padding oracle attacks against the CTR mode, so-called counter mode. In the previous segment, we talked about how the counter mode actually works and how we added padding to it. And today I will show you what happens if padding errors are leaked to the attacker, what kind of um, effect uh, it will have in the sense that uh, the attacker will be able to recover the entire plain, plain text message. Uh, first, I will show to you that uh, a much more simpler problem um, that uh, the attacker can learn the exact length of the plain text easily by manipulating the ciphertext. This is called the chosen ciphertext attack. So uh, you can imagine a scenario like this. Uh, you have uh, you have one participant, say Alice here, right? And you have another participant, Bob. Okay. Um, Alice and Bob uh, are exchanging confidential data, say in a in a proper encrypted channel. So the data that is flowing here is encrypted. Okay. Um, so uh, let's let's call the data C. C is encrypted data. Now Eve. Eve is seeing C. C is, of course, interested to understand what is inside C. Um, let us assume uh, C was produced using AES in, in the counter mode with padding, as we talked about. What is goal of Eve? Eve uh, wants to copy the ciphertext C, right, and send it to Bob and ask him to decrypt it. Uh, you may ask, why would Bob ever do that? Uh, let me explain to you a few scenarios that happens. Okay. Uh, let's call this ciphertext C prime, which is a modified version of C. Eve knows some transformations that will help him to learn about C. That's why he's taking C prime and ask Bob to decrypt C prime. Okay. Let's assume Bob would not be fooled to decrypt C as it is. That's the reason why we are talking about another ciphertext called C prime. Um, in practice, this, ha this happens in many, many uh, scenarios. For example, um, if B is viewed as a web server, a uh, web server may be generating a cookie encrypted using say AES in the counter mode or whatever mode and uh, uh, say let's assume for our discussion it's encrypted using AES counter mode with padding and now um, if if uh, somebody else is, is uh, modifying the cookie um, it is possible cookie, cookies are part of client data anyways um, once it reached the client it cannot be trusted back by the server the client can modify the cookie and resubmit it to the server so there are many, many scenarios where chosen ciphertext attack happens in practice. Okay, so don't do not question the, the, the feasibility of Eve submitting a ciphertext to Bob. Okay, so that's, that's possible. All right. Um, so uh, let's now consider this scenario where Bob is getting feedback from Eve if his uh, ciphertext C prime is well formed or not from a padding perspective. Okay, remember the padding blocks we talked about in the previous segment. Let's take a simple example, only one block. Uh, Okay, one block, AES block is uh, usually made, uh, is basically 16 bytes. Um, so let's assume that the data is only uh, 14 bytes. Okay, so that means the last two bytes will, will be reserved for padding, right? It will be done as 0, 2 and 0, 2. These are the last two bytes, padding bytes. Okay, this is a valid padding because we say it's two bytes, therefore we put 0, 2, 0, 2. Okay, but if we say uh, 2 here and we put uh, number 3 here, then this is wrong because um, 0 to expects 0 to 0 to 2 times. So this is a wrong padding. Okay, so um, this feedback is enough. If if B, Bob, gives feedback to Eve saying that uh, your padding is okay or not okay. When, when Bob decrypts C prime using um, the private key, he will give feedback to Eve saying the ciphertext that you sent is not properly decrypted. Okay, uh, with a padding error or not a padding error. This is the, the foundation of padding oracle attacks. Most of the attacks that if you search online are CBC oriented, cyber blockchaining specific. But I wanted to show to you even counter mode with padding is vulnerable to the same style of attack. So I'll take a simple example first to show to you how we can learn the exact length of the plain text. Okay, so, so let's do that now. Okay, so I'm going to show, show to you um, a, a simple, padding oracle game right uh, which i put together okay the, the game uh, uh, proceeds as follows the game is giving the attacker uh, a challenge what is the length of the plain text so we don't know the plain text but we are only given a cipher text okay um but how can we proceed now let's say we 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 take the um cipher text and we modify the first byte okay and we submit to the uh, system 
and ask the system to decrypt. Okay, the system is the system that is willing to decrypt any ciphertext for us. Okay, so it's giving feedback. Okay, your padding is fine. What does it mean? It means we modified the first byte of the ciphertext. The resulting uh, plain texts turned out to be successful in terms of formatting. That means the first byte cannot be part of the padding, right? If it was part of the padding, let's assume the plain text was empty for a moment. That means the all of the bytes will be um, 16, 16, 16, right? Or uh, one zero in hex. If that was the case, if we modify the first byte, we wouldn't have gotten 16. Therefore, we would have gotten a, an invalid padding error. Okay, but we didn't get an invalid padding error. Therefore, the first byte cannot be um, padding byte okay cannot contribute to the padding calculation what about second byte let's try the second byte let's modify the second byte also now we modify the first two bytes of the ciphertext which means uh, let's see what happens now okay we still have valid padding okay we still says the first two bytes are not part of padding calculation let's modify the first three bytes then okay we still haven't gotten padding error let's continue this let's modify the first four bytes of the ciphertext the challenge ciphertext and try the chosen ciphertext attack. We still got no padding error. Okay, let's try one, two, three, four. Let's modify the fifth byte and now try this one. Okay, so we modified the first five bytes. All of them, the feedback we got for all of them is that padding is always valid. What does it mean? It means the first five bytes are not used during padding checking, right? If it, if it were, then we would have gotten an invalid padding error because we modified the ciphertext. Okay, all right. So let's uh, continue with sixth byte modification. It's saying invalid padding now. So the sixth byte turned out to be, we modified the sixth byte of the ciphertext and we got invalid padding. So what does it mean? It means the first five bytes were not part of the uh, padding calculation. Remember, we are talking about only one block. One block is made of 16 bytes in, in AES. This is 16 bytes, 32 ASCII characters. Therefore, we can conclude safely that the plain text length must be five. Otherwise, um, the first, uh, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten the sixth time an invalid padding. Okay, only during the sixth byte modification we got an invalid padding error, uh, which which tells us that the last um, 11 bytes of the 16 bytes uh, correspond to the padding bytes, okay? Therefore, we can safely conclude that we computed the length of the plain text, which is one, two, three, four, five, because sixth attempt, we got invalid padding, okay? So that's basically it. So if you have an oracle where you can modify the, the, the cipher text, submit and ask for feedback, whether is the resulting a plain text valid from a padding point of view and if the answer is yes you keep continuing until you get an invalid padding at that moment you know that your modification has triggered the uh, padding oracle check therefore uh, you found the correct plain text okay now i'll show you don't worry about this exception there's nothing to do with your padding oracle attack so i will show you the actual secret itself okay well this is hard code in the code just for demo purpose right it says, here's the plain text, right? The plain text is guess, G-U-E-S-S. -S. And uh, uh, we have not found the guess from, from, um, from this attack. What we, what we found instead is the length, okay, which is just five, right? One, two, three, four, five. And exactly uh, during the sixth attempt, we got an invalid padding. That means the first five bytes of our um, ciphertext and the corresponding plain text, um, were not part of the padding. That therefore we concluded length must be five, and which is correct because G U E S S is five letters only. Okay, so uh, so what the conclusion is that we can learn the um, length of the plain text if we have a padding oracle that gives feedback whether padding was valid or invalid. That's what we learned so far. Okay, um, we can take it to the next level actually. In the next segment, I will show to you how you can even decrypt the whole plain text and then learn the uh, plain text if we have such an oracle. Okay, this is just a small piece of information, right? You modify the cipher text and you submit it, you get feedback whether you're okay or not. <clears throat> um, if the modified cipher text is okay, that means you know um, there is something, uh, 
you know that particular modification has no effect on the padding calculation, right? Otherwise, you would have gotten an error message. Okay, that's basically the, the main point. And it is also interesting to note that this is not so specific to uh, CBC or CTR per se. All, all ciphers that uh, have this notion of padding oracle uh, or padding uh, scheme uh, must uh, make sure that such kind of error messages are not leaked. Okay. Um, it's not just hiding the exception, it is also making sure that you know timing data is not leaked. Um, uh, of course, we, I will talk about the fix later, but um, it's interesting to, to know that only a tiny, tiny piece of information that was helpful to know the length of a message, okay? Which may or may not be a big deal in general, but, but I wanted to start simple today, okay? Thank you.